If you, think, if you, if you didn't make it uh, through them, uh, that's fine. We're gonna, we're gonna, we'll talk about them. So there's some really good passages, right? Um, in in uh, that, and there's, we could go through many, many more passages in the Bible. But First Corinthians 15:33, right? It's a really good one. Bad company, good character. Is that a good one? <laughs> what are what are what are some insights of that one? Any any? What you write down? Huh? Something bad. Something bad. Yeah, I mean that, that's pretty simple, right? As you as most straightforward as that is bad company corrupts good people. So, right? We talk about this 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 this, this session potentially says life giving relationships, right? Yes. Proverbs 18, 4, 18, 24. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer to a brother. Mm-hmm. Any insights? Any, any you write down on that? What does that say about, about relationships? They're not always um, biological. Okay. Yeah. But they're one that sticks with you through the good times and hard times. Yeah, right. One that sticks through you. Good. Uh, Colossians 3, 12 to 14 talks about. Um, Close it with compassion, kindness, humility, but bear with each other and forgive one another. All right, how, how, how does that play into our everyday lives? Oh. <laughs> oh, I did not hear a sigh. This has about we need to be in unity, right? Yeah. And, and, and it's easier said than done, right? But it says to forgive each other, right? If any of you have an agreement against someone, right? Look at this line. Forgive as what? God has forgiven you. you. Wow, right? Forgive as... So the Bible is saying, listen, uh, how you treat others, right? You need to think about how God, right? All of us who are sinners, all of us who are messed up, God forgave us. And the same way we need to forgive others. I love the Ecclesiastes, right? Two are better than one. Right? Three chord. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. John 15, 12 to 15, right? Jesus says, my command is what? That you love one another, right? It's this love that we have, and Jesus says, and he says, look, look, look at this, he says, greater love has no one than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my, Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I command. It's like, wow, right? It's that relationship that we have with Jesus, and Jesus kind of pictured, right, what, what kind of true biblical friendship is. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born from a time of adversity. Right? And, and, and you know there's people in your life, right, who, who have been with you, or you've been with them, and there's some trying times, and, and a lot of times, right, we grow closer with those people, right, who are with us through the thick and thin. And one of, it's probably my favorite, right? Proverbs 27, 17. Uh, iron, as iron sharpens iron, it's one person sharpens another. So the idea is, we were meant, right, to sharpen one another. We were meant for life-giving relationships. That's what we're going to talk about today. Is we're going to look at the different levels of, 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 of relationships. We're going to look at uh, friendship. I know. Yep. Describe 17, 17. Yeah. What, what's your take on that? A friend loves at all times and her brother is born at a time for adversity. My take is that a lot of times some of our, our closest relationships, they grow stronger when we're together in times of struggle or adversity. When we go through some trying times or some times of struggle, right? Some of those people in our lives who are with us, with them, or we're with them, we kind of grow that bond stronger through times that may be may not be so uh, sunny and bright, right? So some gloomy times and tough times. Right. right. So, That's where you get the brother factor. Yeah. Brother is born at a time of adversity, meaning like, you know, not not like a genetic family brother, right? But something like a brother that, like, uh, you know, some of us may have friends who are like, like you call them like they're like my brother, right? And that, that's what that's the saying is, you can develop some of these close, kind of almost like brotherly bonds or sisterly bonds, right? When you're in, in the in the hardest times of your life is when you kind of see kind of who the true people are in your life. Thanks. So we're gonna look at kind of three levels. Hopefully, we'll have enough for all three. Uh, of different types of relationships God has given us. We talk, we're going to talk about friendships at the basic level, but very important to talk about. We're going to talk about um, uh, small groups for a little bit, and then we're going to talk about a uh, mentoring. So these are the different levels of um, relationships that we have. So first off, we're going to look at how God has created for relationships. This is this is not in your notes. This is just kind of kind of uh, kind of a um, 
foundation to make sure that we're kind of we're on the same page. So one of the great things is right that that God created mankind. I, I know that I know that, that that's very simple to or over, but you know God is this all powerful, all knowing, and He created human beings. He created Adam, right? To 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 uh, to be on the earth, to to look after the earth, and to commune with God and to worship God, and He created mankind. But you know what? The cool thing is when when God created Adam, He said it is not good what for man to be alone, alone, right? And and He created a companion for Adam, and He created Eve because if it just was Adam, right? I don't I don't think that's fulfilling God's vision for humanity. And God's vision for humanity is for us to always be in relationship with one another. But the most important part is um, relationships are a vital part of our spiritual growth. Right? Relationships are a vital part of our spiritual growth. A lot of times we we kind of miss this idea. You know, we 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 we've missed the idea that we need people in our lives that help us grow. And, and, and that comes in a lot of different facets. And, and I don't know about you, but I can't do this spiritual life alone. It's too hard to do this journey alone. You need people in your life to help you with spiritual growing. Right now, I want you to write down, just spend one minute, write down some, on your paper, someone on the top of your paper, write down somebody uh, who has been extremely influential in your life. And have shaped you, right? Does, does that mean good or bad? I mean, what I mean, Oh, go, yeah. I mean, I mean, are you taking it bad? My intention was good. Yeah. My, my intention was good, but if someone bagged your thing, I guess I can write that down. Yeah. It's kind of interesting studies. In, the, in, in 1985, uh, they, did, they, did, they looked at two different surveys. 1985, they did a poll, and, and they said that 10%, just 10% of Americans responded. Of having uh, no close confidence. Ten percent of having no close confidence. They looked at the same study years later in 2005, and they found that 25 percent of Americans uh, reported having no close friends. This is from a study by William something called Fox Friendship. Um, there's also hidden studies that friendship is connected to well-being. Um, Medical researchers and social scientists have, have done a study, and they pointed out there's a strong link between friendship and well-being. They say that people with close friendships tend to have better health, are more fulfilled, and live longer. So there's a connection to friends and friendship and well-being. In an article by uh, Joseph Wolf Street in the Atlantic Sun, he, he has an article about what makes us happy. And in that article, he talks about this Harvard study at Harvard, where they took um, in 19, uh, 30, 1937, that Harvard research tracked 268 men, and they tracked them through their entire lives from this point all the way into their 70s, past retirement. Right? Yeah. Huh? Um, oh my gosh. And, and they, <laughs> they, they, they tracked these men, and what they found is, after all these men, some of these men were very successful after, the, after all these years, what they found is that what they always all the men said that family and friends were some of their biggest accomplishments in their life. Right? Family and friends were some of the biggest accomplishments of their life. There's, there's, a, there's an article that came in the New York Times called uh, Facebook in a Crowd, and it was a guy who, um, uh, I was going to read the article, but I think most people took time. There's a guy who had 700 Facebook friends. This, this was in 2008. Actually, the article in 2008, yeah. Uh, 700 Facebook friends. So, so he, did, well, he, he wanted to prove, right, uh, how, uh, he wanted to see, like, how many of them were real friends. Some of them lived in the area, some of them didn't live in the area. And he invited them all to a bar to come in, and he, and he, he did a Facebook uh, invite, and he sent this invite to all his, all his 700 friends, and guess how many showed up? Two. One. Wow. One. Wow. One showed up, right? Wow. And it's something that he realized that he had social media friends, but he didn't have real friends. Friends. 
There's a, there's a, there's a book called uh, Bowling Alone. This is by a Harvard professor named Robert Putman. And he says that in his book, the rise of technologies, like the internet, social media, and television, have contributed to the decline of informal social activities that foster friendships. I read this quote, and it says that the very technologies done to link us together end up driving us apart. Right? So we live in, a, in an era, in an age, where it is we have this kind of fake uh, sense of community, but oftentimes, right, that community isn't really there. So what I'm trying to paint a picture is that we, we need to have life community relationships that are intentional and real to help us grow. So, what are characteristics of a life giving friend? Encouraging. Encouraging. Encouraging, yeah. That, that, that actually, that's actually number two, actually. Uh, <laughs> number one, a friend commits, right? A friend commits to you. Um, I, I love the story about, if you feel with the Old Testament, uh, uh, Jonathan and David. And Jonathan and David made this covenant together kind of a promise to them, to stand by each other, right? And if you, John, the, the story of Jonathan and David actually goes through uh, many, many chapters of, 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 and actually different books of the Bible account of Jonathan and David. And they go through some really tough things like, uh, um, you know, up through their lives. And they made this commitment together, right, to be behind each other's back. That's a great I- idea and a visual of a friend commits. I don't know, but hopefully you have people in your life that commits to you, right? That like when they say, right, they're gonna uh, be there, right? They're there. When they say they're going to pray for you, they pray for you. When they say they're gonna do this, it is a, 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 a life-giving friend. Someone who gives life to you commits, right? Uh, those who are friends who don't commit, who are who are always uh, who always don't show up for us, mm. right? Those are not life-giving friends, right? Mm. Yep. I read a book about soul ties, and they were talking about positive soul ties, and they mm-hmm. talked about the two of them, and how they were still on the same soul ties, that they, spiritually, they could feel each other's pain, because mm-hmm. so they were both connected in a spiritual way, and when we have good friends like that, sometimes yeah. a friend calls you at this yeah. exact time you need them to call you, yeah. like it's almost like their antenna lit yeah. up saying, you know, I need to reach out, yeah. like a, a, a mother situation, mm-hmm. yeah. that's good, mm-hmm. thank you, Vera, thank you, thank you for sharing that, that's awesome, Number two, a friend looks you up, or when they're encouraging you, right? Uh, right. Uh, uh, I know that uh, life-giving relationships for me, right? But when I after I after I talk to the review with them, right, I get encouraged and lift up, and and I get uh, motivated, right? Uh, that that that's the difference of a life-giving friend. It's somebody who is there to say, "I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to encourage you, and I'm going to be there for you." One of the great stories I love is a story of, of Ruth in the book of Ruth. Okay, so Ruth, so her, so Ruth is going through some tragedy uh, in, in their life, and uh, her mother-in-law, right, uh, Naomi, right, is she lost Naomi, lost her husband, Naomi lost her sons, and there's a famine in the land in the book of Ruth, and and Naomi basically tells her daughter-in-law, it's like, leave me alone, let me basically let me die in a rock, right, and and Ruth says, no, 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 I'm going to be with you. I'm going to help you through this. I'm going to get you through this. Right? And Ruth is the great testament of a friend who lifts you up. She did not leave Naomi's side, even though Naomi told her to go away. Right? Because Ruth was a life-giving friend, someone who lifts you up. So hopefully, right, when, when we look at our, our friends, that there are friends who lift us up when we're down. Right? Who prays for us. Right? Who, who knows that when we need encouragement. Who knows the right word to say in our lives. Next one's kind of hard because I think in our society today, uh, we, it's hard to find this, but a, a friend actually lets you in. Lets you in. Um, lets you in meaning, lets you in my life, right? You, you ever heard of, um, there's, there's a thing, um, uh, we, we have uh, refrigerator rules in your house, right? <laughs> meaning, like, you know someone is close to you, right? When they you know, when you just come in your house, open your fridge and grab something out of the fridge, right? That is, that, that is one, one of the characteristics of somebody who is close to you where you have refrigerator rights, where I can go into someone's house, open the fridge, get what I need, right? And I know that I don't have to ask, right? That, 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 but, but also, right, mostly, emotionally, right? Can, yes. Do you have friends who emotionally let you in? Right, who 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 will spiritually like you with? Who will share prayer requests with you? Who will share, or or you will share prayer requests to them? Because if you want to get 
past the service level of a Facebook friend, right? And you want to get a life giving friend. Do you have people who let you in into your life? But fourthly, a friend speaks the hard truth. Right? Yeah. It, uh, love with grace. With grace. Yeah, with love and grace. Yeah, it was love and grace. Big difference. If, um, if you were here from last week, and Pastor Rex had a great sermon, right? How God speaks to us through others. It's a great sermon. If you haven't listened to it, go online and listen to it. And I love that he was saying that, listen, there are people that God's put in your life to speak into your life, right? There were, there, God's put us into this life to speak to our life, meaning, if I'm going, this is, you know, Pastor Rex gave an example, right? Like, some people will ask a million people, yeah. right, to, to they, look at what color carpet, but, but if they have a life, big life position, they're not going to ask hardly anybody. And if we're praying, right, a lot of times God speaks to us, not only through our prayer time, not only through the Bible, but God speaks to us through other people. And we need to, but here's the thing, we need to give God the opportunity to do that, by having these life-giving relationships. Because if we don't have life-giving friends in our lives, then there won't be opportunities for God to use that person to speak others. Right? I, I, I know there have been so many friends in my life where I've had um, prayer requests that I needed to go through, and people give God the advice, you know? And I, and I have to, I, and I take their advice, and I pray about it, and I, and, and I, and I meditate on it, and it's important you have friends who speak the hard truth, right? Well, who can speak the hard truth in love right. and in God grace, God. right? Because, wait, it is gold, right, if you have somebody who can tell you in a very gracious way, right, the truth. And guess, guess what? If you're in a life-giving friendship that, that, that you're in a mutual life friendship, guess what? You're going to be able to receive that easy, right? You're going to be able to receive that, right, and understand that. But what, what are some things that we need to do, right? What are some things that we need to do to find, right? Or not find, but to support the profession? What are some things that we should be doing with uh, each other that support life-giving spiritual friendship? The first one, right, is uh, play, right? In, in, enjoy each other. Are you, are you going to disorder because that's most important? Or is no, it's going to be. Okay, yeah. All right. Remember last week we talked about uh, Sabbath, and Sabbath is... Part of the Sabbath is not only spending time with God, but the other the Sabbath is enjoying and delighting, right, what God has given us. And a lot of times we just need to uh, enjoy the wish that we have with one another because that brings us life. I, I, the, some of the funnest times I have with people is just to laugh with them, right? Just to laugh with friends and, 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 and joke and, and enjoy laughter and joy with each other. What's important, though, know, this, is, this is face-to-face contact, right? Uh, Yes, you know, in a, in a busy schedule, right, I'll be the first to admit, right, in a busy schedule, that, that's hard to do. That's very, very hard to do, is to try to make time for people, right? But there are people in my life where if I text or email them and say, hey, let's have lunch together, uh, let's meet for lunch, they will make the time for lunch. In the same way, there's people who text or call me and or email me and say, hey, can we, get to, can, we, can we get together for coffee or lunch sometime? And I'll make the time for them. Face-to-face contact, I know that sounds simple, Right, but, but that is a really key and important thing. Another thing, in a, in a church context for spiritual friendship, is to serve together. Service together. Some, some of you probably serve together. Oh, all right. Okay. I had, by the way, I had that's, a, right? that's, that's an explanation. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, that's e- a good e- e- either it's a good point or a bad point. I don't know. <laughs> um, wow. uh, to serve together. Uh, how, how many of you have served in some sort of capacity, whether one time or a great fellowship or somewhere? Have you served, right? When you, when you, when you serve with others, uh, there's this kind of connection and this bond that you, get, that you have, uh, you know, connection. Um, so, Courtney's not here, but Courtney and I, we, we went on a mission trip to Haiti. And, uh, right. Yeah. And the people on the mission trip, said, are we together serving, right? That was, the um, most, that, that was the most kind of rewarding thing. But also, you draw the connection, you're serving together. Yeah. And more importantly, you need people to pray with you and for you, right? That, that, that's so key. You can never have enough people praying with you or for you, right? You can never have enough people praying for you or with you. Um, you can never have that. There's one of the aspects, right? 
that we have that is so key to um, our lives is making sure that who can pray for me. Because my hope, my hope is, my hope is this: that for each one of us in this room, there is somebody. If you need a prayer request, there should be somebody at the tip of your uh, fingers that you should be able to text, call, email, or go see. Right when you need prayer. Because if you have that in your life, that's going to help you the most. But, how do you find good friend? I know, I know that may sound uh, uh, trivial, right? But, 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 but we can't, we can't uh, uh, neglect that. Some simple one is, right? Sometimes, sometimes we just got to ask God, right? Simple. Sometimes we just got to ask God, pray that God would give you a friend, right? A, a spiritual life-giving friend. But number two, number two is ask people to do things with you and initiate an opportunities to deepen your friendship, deepen your relationship. Wait, listen. I, I know that I can't receive unless I give out, right? I can't receive unless I uh, give out. What, what that means is I can't have deep relationships when people come, where I get people to, to call me unless I call them up, right? Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of work to make sure that you keep your relationship fresh and you initiate opportunities, right? Because, listen, it's much easier, right, for me to sit out, sit at home on my couch than try to make arrangements to, to you know, with my wife to make sure her stuff is free, like, if you go out and then and the kids are taken care of. It's a lot harder, but it's more worthwhile if I do those things. Number three is be a friend to others, right? Be a friend to others. Uh, we talked a lot about, the, we saw a lot of passages in the Bible that uh, relationships are key and relationships are important. Let's try again. <laughs> we tend to put all of our focus on romantic and sexual intimacy and therefore I think we've downplayed other forms such as friendship so we've turned friend from a noun into a verb it's just you had someone on social media hey presto they're now your friend which just means if they have access to your homepage and you have access to theirs that is friendship to many people in our world today but in the Bible if you especially if you look at the book of Proverbs a friend is a friend is someone who knows your soul it's not just someone that you have a shared hobby with or occasionally hang out with. It's someone who knows the real you, who knows what's really going on inside. Um, the Hebrew word for friend is, is very closely related to the word for secrets, because a friend is someone you tell your secrets to. Uh, we see this actually with, with what Jesus says in, in John 15, verse 15. Jesus says to the disciples, I no longer call you servants, a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends because, and whatever Jesus says next is going to show us what he thinks is defining a friendship. He says, I've called you friends because all that the Father has revealed to me, I have made known to you. In other words, Jesus is saying, you have friends because I'm letting you in on everything. I'm opening up to you. Um, I'm, I'm spilling all the beans. So, that, I think, is why in the Bible, friendship is such an honourable and precious thing. It is very intimate. Um, and Proverbs shows us you can't be wise in God's world without friendship. Um, that's a word not just to those of us who are, are single, it's a word to those of us who are married. I've seen marriages suffer and implode for a lack of friendship outside the marriage. All of us need friendship. So the Bible actually gives us a wonderful vision for it. It shows us that um, although our culture says sex and intimacy are virtually the same thing, the Bible says, firstly, you can have a lot of sex and no intimacy. Yeah, yeah. That is sadly possible. Yeah. But it also shows us in what it teaches about friendship, you can have a lot of intimacy that has nothing to do with sex. And we see lots of examples of that. Jesus, we see having deep friendship with the 12, then with the three, and then with the disciple he loved. Paul, similarly, uh, we realise, was not just out there on his own. Um, he was embedded again in a, ma a matrix of close relationships. And so, 
The Bible has a very high view of friendship. If we're going to be faithful to Scripture, we need to have a high view of friendship as well. That was good. Yeah, and the idea is, right, the whole class is creating room, right? What, what, what do we need to create room to help us grow and help us develop? And friendship is a key aspect of helping us grow and develop. Life in small groups. Um, we at Grace Fellowship, we, have, we believe that we were created to do life together, right? We know that this is a big church and that this is uh, easy to get lost. And we have small groups here um, that help us grow. Show of hands, who is either currently or has been part of a small group here at Grace Fellowship? Show of hands. Currently okay. are. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, this, 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 this is technically a class. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. This is technically a class. Oh, yes. oh. Yeah. But uh, so a small group kind of meets in different settings, right? It, it, they meet uh, different aspects. They meet in mostly people's houses. They meet in, this, in, they meet in a church. And uh, small groups are a lot smaller, right? Small groups. They're not, they're not this big. Usually our small groups are anywhere from three to ten people is what we try to do. Uh, maybe three to twelve people. And and what and there's different levels of small groups. And a lot, sometimes some run at Grace uh, for um, a short period of time. Some run for like six weeks, eight weeks. Some last for you know, can last a whole year. I know some small groups of Grace Fellowship have been together for a long, long time. And they're all on our website. If you go to our website and look at our small groups, we have a lot of these small groups that we have available. And if you've never considered a small group, uh, I would encourage you that it's probably one of the best things you can do as far as a relational investment. You know, currently my wife and I were part of a marriage small group where we meet with three other couples. I mean, we're studying a marriage book together, and that's a very helpful thing, right, because we want to focus on our marriage. And we have a small group that helps us. So we have three other couples that, that will, like, iron sharpens iron, right, and, and help us through this. Um, I've been part of many small groups. And, I, and you know, the funny thing is, um, like, there is this um, kind of uh, hesitancy about small groups. People are, people are kind of fearful and scared. I remember uh, we had a, we had a, years ago, we had a, we had a small group fair here. Like, like a, like a where, where basically it was like a, it was, uh, it was I, I, I guess the analogy, it was like speed dating for small groups, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, there were multiple tables, right? And you just rotated tables, and you kind of went to your tables, and you kind of met different small group leaders and met different people, and then you, you had to form a, or, or a small group like that. So I, I was my wife and I were meeting a group, and then we, we, we had people who, who ended up joining our group, right? And I remember the first group night, the first group night, um, we have, we have a driveway. Our driveway probably fits um, uh, three up and down, and then two across. So it fits uh, three by two. So it fits like, it fits like six cars, okay? And uh, and we live in a cul-de-sac, so there's not really street parking because it's like we're in a circle. Um, and then so we had people parking. The people will start parking like like on a cul-de-sac, and like and, and they were just lined up all around the cul-de-sac, and like nobody wanted to park in the driveway, right? <laughs> and and, and and I think I don't, I don't know whether I asked week one or I asked week two, and I kind of asked like maybe I think it was week one. I said why why, why didn't nobody park in the driveway? And people admitted like yeah, we, if this was horrible, we wanted to bail out. We <laughs> <stop>. <laughs> and, and everybody had this everybody had this mindset, and everybody was everybody was scared to like because they they, they were like small groups are tough, right? I don't, I don't want to commit to something. I don't want to go in the driveway and get and get in that driveway. But you know what? I, I find that mentality, yeah. right, in a lot of us, that, that we're afraid to kind of uh, sign up, we're afraid to connect with somebody, and uh, you usually fall, and we take off small groups, so I, I think there's a big push for that in the fall, Come, I think October will be our big push, there's a few going on now, but uh, go to our website, uh, take the opportunity, join a small group, and you know, if you don't like it, you know, you can, you can just not, not go after a few weeks, but I, I feel it's one of the best investments you can make this, you're with smaller group of people and you're uh, really helping each other grow. And usually you're studying a, a book or a, fa a Bible passage together and it's just a really good investment for your soul. All right, that's folders. I'm gonna talk folders. All right, mentoring. We're gonna spend some time on mentoring before we close. A anybody, is that everybody kind of, we've already heard this word like mentoring, right? Yes. Um, but you know, I wanna talk about kind of life-giving mentoring in a spiritual sense. So. Uh, let me give you a definition of mentoring, and this is something what I found is a lot of Christians uh, 
do not engage in any time of form mentorship, or never have engaged in mentorship. I've had uh, different levels of mentoring throughout my entire life, and uh, mentoring is almost like an accelerated way for me to grow kind of my, my personal, professional, or spiritual life. So let me give you a definition. Uh, here's a definition. This definition is from a great book called Spiritual Mentoring by Keith Anderson and Randy Reed. Here's the definition of spiritual mentoring. The definition of spiritual mentoring is this. <coughs> spiritual mentoring is a triadic relationship between mentor, mentoree, and the Holy Spirit. Where the mentoree can discover through the already present action of God, influence of God, ultimately identify the child of God, and a unique voice for keen responsibility. <coughs> Are you still time to write that in? Yes, please do. <laughs> so it's, it's funny because I have a mentor at work. Oh, good. But yeah, I know I shouldn't have thought, but <laughs> I'm saying bye. I'm not, I don't know. It's different. <laughs> What does what, what, what is, what is a work like mentor look like? Um, well, this one is, well, it's kind of, it is just a friendship we're about it. We're, you know, I have goals, I'm setting goals, and she's helping me reach Okay, them. yeah. It's um, definitely a mentor, But they're right? not godly ones. Yeah, they're but that, that, that in, a, in, a, in, a, in a corporate sense, that is definitely a mentor. Somebody who helps set goals yeah. and helps you with that, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and one, of the, one of the best things about a life giving relationship is having a spiritual mentor, right? And and I love that it's mentor, right, and mentoree, but it also understands. Thing that the Holy Spirit needs to be part of our lives. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit needs to be engaged with, right, with what we're doing, right? Because to, 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 order to see what God is, see what God's doing in our lives, so we can connect with God. But also, right, kingdom responsibility. Meaning, I have a place in this world that God has given me, and I need uh, sometimes I need help from others, right, for me to get to that place. It makes sense, like. Meaning, I have a role that God has for me. God has a plan for me. God has a unique responsibility for me. And sometimes in our lives, we need other people to help us get there or to show us the direction. Right? Uh, and these people in our lives, right, are key people. But I'm going to tell you the different levels of mentoring to make sure we're all on the same page. A lot of times when people view mentoring, they only do it on one level. Okay? And there's actually three levels of mentoring. And my suggestion... My suggestion, ideally, in a perfect world, you have all three at the same time, right? So, but you may not be able to, but <coughs> ideally, you wouldn't have all three. So the first level, right, is you need a mentor, right? Someone who is um, mentoring you, right? Somebody that is giving you um, input and advice, right, and, and, and guidance. Someone who, who, can, who can speak into your life. Somebody you can learn from, right? Uh, yeah, somebody, so somebody, has, somebody you have a quality in, right? Let, let's say, listen, I really like how you are a godly father. Please mentor me, right, how to be a father. Or, you know what, I really love how you how you work in this prayer ministry and how, and, and how you're praying. And I, and I really kind of want to know how to pray better. Can you mentor me in how to be a better prayer warrior, right? Or, or you know what, I really need help in... In, in studying the Bible or reading the Bible, can you mentor me, right?